talking about uh, human sacrifice in the pre-Columbian Americans separating facts from fiction. This was a subscriber's video suggestion. Um, it's about Native American rituals, killings, and sacrifices, or what I could find from that. So let's get right into it. Discover the gruesome truth and the perpetuated fabrication about the human sacrifice in the Aztec Mayan, Incan, and the Hawaiian civilization. In modern minds, the term human sacrifice conjures up Maccabee satanic rituals performed by bloodthirsty barbarians. In the ancient Americans, however, culture is now considered to be highly influential and civilized saw human sacrifice as a necessary part of everyday life. Whether it was to appease the gods or ensure success in battle and agriculture for the following people, the lines between sacrifice and simple survival were often blurred. The Mayans. The Mayans are mostly known for their contribution to astronomy, calendar making, and mathematics, or for the impressive amount of architecture and artwork that they left behind. They are also believed to be the first American culture to incorporate human sacrifice in daily life. Blood was viewed as an incomparable source of nourishment for the Mayan deities. In a time before scientific understanding, human blood became the ultimate offering and was kept flowing to protect their daily way of life. These sacrificial rituals were held in such high regard that only prisoners of war of the highest status would be used for them. Other captives were typically sent into labor force. The most common methods were decapitation and heart removal, neither of which would incur until the victim had been thoroughly tortured. Heart removal ceremonies took place in the courtyards of the temples or at the summit of one and very considered the highest honor. The person to be sacrificed was often painted blue and adorned with a ceremonial headdress being held down by four attendants. These four attendants represent the cardinal direction of north, south, east, and west. The sacrificial knife was then used to cut into the victim's chest at which point a priest would pull out the heart and then show it to the surrounding crowd. After passing the heart to a priest known as the Chilin, blood would be smeared onto the image of a god and the lifeless body would be thrown down the pyramid steps. The sacrificed person's hand and feet were left alone but the rest of their skin was worn by the Chilin as he performed a ritual of rebirth. Decapitation were equally ceremonial with a high importance again placed on the swift flow of blood down the temple steps. Other methods of human sacrifice included death by arrows or even being thrown into the sacred cenote and chins it's uh, during time of famine, droughts, or disease. The sacred cenote is a natural occurring sinkhole eroded into local limestone, approximately 160 feet wide and 66 feet deep with another 66 feet of water at the bottom and sheer sides all around. It acted as a proverbial mouth in the earth waiting to swallow victims whole, the Incas. The Inca Empire was the largest in pre-Columbian America, stretching through what is now modern day Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, western and eastern central Bolivia, northwestern Argentina, and into northern and central Chile. Partially because of this vast size, it was plagued by a variety of natural disasters, everything from volcanoes erupting to earthquakes and massive floods. The Incas resorted to the practice of human sacrifice as a way to prevent, recover, and cope with these regularly occurring upheavals. The Incas are most known for their sacrifice of children. Many sacrifices were prisoners, but archaeological records have proven that some children were actually raised specifically for these ritual kills. 
The Incas believed that physical, physical, healthy children were the purest sacrifice that is available, and that the afterlife for these children would be, would truly be better, happier place. Humans to be sacrificed were treated like demigods before they were killed. Excellent diets, feasts to honor them, and even meeting with the emperor were offered along with a much envied position in the afterlife. Because of this, many of the children and their families went to the grave willingly. In fact, they saw it as honor. On occasion, such as the king's inauguration, the Incas sacrificed as many as 200 young people at once. The hair of Inca mummies from the time has revealed that many children's sacrifices were significantly drugged. Derivatives of the cocoa plant for weeks leading up to their death. Some of the younger mummies showed signs of blunt trauma to the head, but many of the pubescent women selected simply seemed to have drunk themselves into a final stupor before peacefully accepting their fate. These victims faced such horrible and drawn out deaths as being buried alive, yet their remains reveal absolutely no signal of struggle. Are the Aztecs human sacrifice? For the Aztecs, even the sun god requires a constant flow of human blood in order to exist. Sacrifices for the Aztecs were detailed rituals, but perhaps what makes them truly stand out in the scale in which they were conducted. During the reign of their empire, it's estimated that an average of 200,000 people were sacrificed a year. Many rituals surrounded the theme of mass sacrifice, such as the inauguration of their greatest pyramid, which is said to have claimed the life of 84,000 over a period of only four days. Wars were even waged solely to gain more prisoners for these gruesome rituals. Deals between city-states were made in which two armies organized staged battles. It was a mutual agreement between both sides that for the greater good of their people, the loser must be led to their death. Another common sacrificial technique included pulling a still beating heart out of a victim's chest and showing it to them in their last moments of consciousness, an acting that took a surprise amount of anatomical knowledge and surgical skill but has since been proven possible by modern science. Um, gladiator competitions were also used to ensure a suitable quantity of human sacrifice. These brutal matches were in no way equal with heaps of skill and armor warriors being pitted against perhaps one or two common men wielding nothing but a club. Again, these gladiators perceived their way of death as the highest honor. One notable ritual in which the sacrifices did not go willingly was that involving the god of rain and lightning, Tlaloc. This god demanded children in their tears. The Aztecs would bring large groups of children to Tlaloc's temple where they were forced to solemnly and ceremonially parade up the steps. If the children did not weep, they would be forced to do so by any means of psychological or physical torture necessary. To the Aztecs, the tears shed by these children on the way to their untimely death was the only way to ensure rain during the oncoming dry season. Other rituals include cannibalism, the life flaying of men, wearing of human skin, and other techniques of drawing out dismemberment and bloodletting including the mass collection of skulls, the Aztecs would often invite their enemies or neighbors to witness these blood rituals, causing a crippling fear in nearly everyone who came across them. The first Spanish conquistadors to stumble upon them described giant pyramids with a never-ending flow of human blood running down them. It has been speculated that the reason that the Aztecs survived longer than any of the others was the amount of fear they invoked in colonists. It wasn't until Europeans claimed more Aztec victims uh, via the instruction of disease like smallpox than these sacrificial rites did that invasion 
was even attempted. Uh, the Hawaiians? Many people associate human sacrifice in Hawaii with the old vice age of a virgin being thrown into a volcano, but this has more to do with Hollywood than history. Sacrifices were actually held in sacred temples called Hieu. Set aside from these rituals, the people sacrificed during these rituals were usually captives from worrying tribes with a special significance put on the death of rival chiefs. The main god they set out to appease through human sacrifice was Ku, god of war and defense, without whose blessing they would not be able to secure any victories in battle. Those who were sacrificed were most often bled to death and bludgeoned in the head. The victims would be hung upside down on wooden racks inside the temple. A priest would anoint himself with the, the sweat collected from his sacrifice before beating them until the flesh became smooth. At this time, they would be disemboweled. The remaining flesh would, would be eaten raw by both the priest and the chef of the tribe. The temples where these ceremonies took place still stand today all over Hawaii, with locals urging visitors to show respect for their importance of traditional Hawaiian culture. After this look at human sacrifice, read up on the new ports show that the legend of Aztec towers of human skulls are in fact real. Then step inside the recently unearthed Aztec temple containing the skeletons of 32 children, all with severed necks. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I will put um, the words that I kind of butchered up on the screen when I do try to say them So you guys kind of know what I'm trying to say, but Hope you guys enjoyed this was if you guys want to have a video like this um, I know it's not a folklore video, but if you guys have like any recommendation videos or anything like that um, Just let me know down below. I read all the comments So I hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up Hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications so you never miss out. And I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.